Hi everybody, Jamie here, and uh, what I'm going to do in this uh, series of videos is uh, try my best to explain the very useful but also the very difficult and convoluted vintage warmer of uh, PSP AudioWare. Uh, it's a great little plug, but uh, it can be very intimidating if, if you're not sure exactly <laughs> what to do with it. So uh, in this video, what I'm going to try to do is explain what everything does and also give you some visuals for using Ableton's plugs as to what each one of these uh, uh, knobs uh, does to your sound. Okay, first, what I'd like to explain is that the vintage warmer is first and foremost a compressor limiter. Now, it turns out that the way that it's built uh, inside, uh, like with all the algorithms and the way it processes the sound, uh, it really acts as a an extremely high quality tape distortion simulator. Okay, so the reason why this plug is very popular is because getting that analog sound as if it were on tape or recorded on tape is very trendy and it's also very desirable okay uh, it could make the difference between fooling somebody into thinking that you did it in a, in a major studio with tapes or you did it at home on your on your iMac or whatever okay uh, if you get if you use it correctly so um, what I'm gonna try to do is use a little bit of Ableton's inherent uh, effects here to show you what each one of these does okay so first of all tape uh, recordings when you record on tape, the, uh, like in the 60s, 70s, right up through today, I think there are still some major um, studios that probably still record to tape because of its quality characteristics. Uh, but when you record to tape, the speed at which you record dictates the quality. So at faster speeds, you're going to have better quality. Slower speeds, of course, is going to introduce lower quality. Similar to today with our, let's say, our digitized age, um, there's always a sacrifice if we record at higher quality, meaning 24 bit, you know, depth at uh, 48 uh, kilohertz, then that means we're using CPU resources. And also if we're recording to like wave um, at 24 bit, we're also using a lot of hard disk space, right? So similar to recording um, at high speeds, you're using a lot of tape, right? So this is uh, essentially what this plug does it not only compresses a signal but it also allows you to uh, simulate high or low quality tape distortion which gives you that analog kind of feel okay so the first thing i'd like to do is to talk about the drive now the drive here is basically going to take your signal and push it into the brick wall now to show you visually what's happening here this drive is represented by this gain knob on the utility device. And the reason why I had to have a utility device here is because the compressor here doesn't necessarily have a gain um, uh, uh, parameter on it. So I need to really use this utility device to drive it into, all right, to drive it into the compressor. So here's what happens with this drive. I'm going to uh, demonstrate it here. And I'm going to play the uh, sine wave that I have, if you can hear that. And what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to uh, turn up my signal here so that you can hear it and this is what happens when you drive the signal into the brick wall okay so the the signal gains and when it hits the limiter you start to distort now this type of distortion is desirable but not that but controlled of course okay that's one of the things that I want to say about the vintage warmer is that you need to use this with very subtle changes and very subtle um, effects on your master buster on the track if you if you think this is going to be like a hundred percent wet uh, effect your 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 mixes are not going to sound right okay so this is a very subtle subtle plug here um, that makes all the difference if you know what's going on you know if you know what you're doing okay uh, that you know that you're putting a little bit of tape distortion on it. So very subtle. We don't want that much distortion, of course. Okay. So that's what that drive does. The drive is essentially going to take this, the, the, the signal and it's going to push it right into the brick wall internally. And what you get is that distortion. All right. Now, the next thing. Um, the gain reduction. On the PSP Vintage Warmer, what you want to do is pretty much keep the gain. Uh, you know, if you're using it just to put some tape saturation onto your, or tape distortion onto your, track you're probably just going to look at the gain reduction here because what this is going to do is similar to our compressor down here if i play this again and push the signal into the compressor you can see that the gr the gain reduction on the compressor here is about maybe four maybe five uh, db right that's what that's the signal that's being reduced all right and 
uh, resulting in the sound that you hear. So essentially, you're going to keep it on the GR, gain reduction. Okay? And you'll switch them back, back and forth between VU and PPM, which is the, the uh, pseudo peak meter, which will come in handy when we look at the drums. Okay? But uh, here, uh, what we're going to take a look at now is the knee. Now, the knee on the vintage warmer is the same thing that the knee does on the compressor. Now, if I drop my threshold on my compressor here, it'll be easier to see what actually happens with the knee. Okay? If I up the knee on my compressor, what that does is it widens the scope or the area where the compressor actually starts to work. Okay? When you go down to zero knee, it goes from signal into processed right away. That's why we hear a click at the beginning. Now, if we have a softer knee, this is a hard knee, by the way, 0 dB, hard knee. If we have a softer knee, what that means is that the compressor, if you can see, you see the, the gray lines moving, like these two lines right here that are moving? This is the range where the compressor starts to work and where it stops working and it goes into the limiter. So essentially, the signal is going to be processed, right? So if I play this, you can see that the signal is already, uh, has already begun. Now, if I go way down here, you see that it's not being uh, processed. But now, the compressor is starting to kick in, starting to kick in, slowly, slowly, kicking in, full limiter. And if you noticed, when I, when I had that sound going, there was no click or no pop. It was a nice transition into our fully limited signal. See that? And that where we get our distortion. And we, co of course, can go up. You know, it's a point where the threshold here, 185, and then push it. Right, there we get there we get our really good, nice distortion that we like, okay? So that's essentially what the knee does. All right, the knee, uh, with a softer knee, the compressor starts a little bit earlier to uh, make the transition from processed sound to, to or some, from not processed sound to processed sound much easier, much smoother. Okay, so that's essentially what on the vintage warmer the knee does. Now here's the thing with the knee on the vintage warmer. When you alter this particular um, parameter on the vintage warmer, I, to me, I don't know if this is what they do because it's kind of hard to figure out what, what they're doing internally because they, they're pretty quiet about it, but... Um, I think that there is an auto gain feature that is just hardwired right to this uh, knee. So meaning that similar to the makeup gain down here on your on your compressor in Ableton, the the, fir the harder the compressor is pushed, the more makeup gain is applied. Okay, so just be aware that the knee here, unless you're really driving this hard, you don't really need a lot of knee. <laughs> okay, as we'll hear. Okay, next thing. One of the most confusing things about the vintage warmer is the speed. Now, the speed, if you think about it, like I just explained with tape saturation, the, fa the faster the speed, the better the, the sound quality. So if you think of speed as being 0, low, 100, high, you're going to essentially go from higher quality, lower, 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 lower quality. Or, in other words, fastest tape speed lowest tape speed okay best quality lowest quality and you'll hear this when we do this the, the survey of the sounds okay now also this is also talking about the speed of the attack and the release of the compressor all right but if you think about it as high quality low quality with the tape saturation that that's that's the best way all right now let's say we start at like 50 percent right 50 percent means that the, the speed of the attack and release are, uh, well, it doesn't really matter what percentage right now, but uh, the, the attack and the release are essentially the same. So the shorter, very, very, very short um, attack and release, very short when we go down to zero, which means um, s uh, very, uh, God, how does it work? Uh, slow tape uh, speed. Fast tape speed means a very slow response on the attack and the release of the compressor. So, essentially, at a high uh, at a high setting, the release the attack and release are going to be very high on the compressor. At a low setting, the attack and the release are going to be very very quick, which is of course going to degrade the quality, right? So, here's the thing: how, you're probably wondering, well, if the speed of the attack and the release are set up in that way. How do you change the release and make them different? Well, here's how this is what the release does. 
when you set a very short release, like let's say we set a, like a 32%, the times one, times two, times four, times a half, times a quarter, so on and so forth here in the release, that's where you set the release. The release is going to be a fraction or it's going to be a multiple of how fast your, your attack is. Okay, So for instance, if we have a 32%, then essentially the... Uh, if you go by two, that means that the release is going to now be 60, 64%, which means it's going to be twice as long as the attack. So essentially, if we went down to our Ableton plug here, if we set the attack on four milliseconds, that means our, our release is going to be around 10 or, you know, like eight or something like this. If our attack was 28 milliseconds, we would go to, uh, you know, 56 milliseconds, so on and so forth, which is, of course, with this is a pain in the ass. Okay, so here um, they they allow you to set the attack first and then the release. Okay, I'm not sure why they did it, but that's just the way PSP did it. Okay, so but if you you know if you think again ta tape speed fast for higher quality, tape speed slow for lower quality, then you can further shape your sound with the release by just tweaking this once you get an area of the sound that you like here. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here and process that um, alone so that I have a separate video coming up next so that it's not like a big half-hour video. All right, so I'll be back in the next one.